Tech Exhibition Modex 2024 just finished in Atlanta. The Brits got themselves a massive laser pointer and OpenAI is building universal artificial intelligence for robots. At this point, Sam Altman should just walk around with a green mask on yelling, somebody stop me. All this plus more in this episode. I'm Nick and today we feel lucky. But first, previously we announced a raffle with a grand prize of $50 in the form of a gift card and we've got a winner. Watch this video to the end to find out who it was because maybe it was you. And stick around for more videos to participate in our next giveaways. Alright, now let's get it. Ben Gerbsel, a famous scientist and futurologist, said at the Beneficial AGI 2024 conference that AI research is entering a stage of exponential growth and that there's already evidence of AI acquiring human capabilities in quite a few industries. This means that the hypothetical moment of singularity in the development of neural networks is upon us, folks. Moreover, mankind can create artificial intelligence equal to itself in just three years. Gertzel sees the potential for the transition from narrow AI to general AI in the creation of an infrastructure that can connect existing and new artificial intelligence paradigms into a single one. If a system that includes many narrow AIs representing different elements of human perception could work as a single algorithm, it would essentially be no less than a human. And if we consider that it could upgrade its own code, it could quickly evolve into a super AI, which is somewhat scary. Or great. Which side are you on this one, guys? Let us know in the comments. Figure the startup has unveiled its first fruits of collaboration with OpenAI. The robot can now interact with people and its environment, describe in words everything it does, maintain a real-time conversation, as well as independently plan and perform some tasks. Figure's founder Brad Adcock wrote in a post on X that Figure 01's built-in cameras send data to a large visual language model trained by OpenAI. The OpenAI model is also responsible for the Android's ability to understand human speech. Simultaneously, Obviously, Figure's proprietary neural networks also receive camera images at 10 hertz and translate all the streams of this information into, quote, fast, low-level, dexterous actions for the robot. Adcock confirmed that the robot was not remotely controlled in the video, and on top of that, it was filmed at real speed. Overall, it's a cool accomplishment for a partnership that's less than two weeks old. Talk about getting things done. And remember, the ultimate goal of this partnership is to create an AI model that can control actions and behaviors of billions and gajillions of robots. Who's got Blade Runner vibes on this one? Actually, scratch that. How about Georgia Guidestone vibes? Anybody? Because this other startup, Covariant, is also pushing for the same goal. It recently announced a universal artificial intelligence platform for robots. So far, it's only for warehouse robots, but it's already a pretty big deal. Imagine an AI that allows many different robots to handle many different objects. This is exactly what Toyota Research Institute, Google Research, and others are now trying to create for humanoid robots. RFM1 works as a predictive mechanism. It takes into account images, videos, joint angles, force readings, and other parameters for efficient handling. To realize this concept, Covariant has collected tons of warehouse data, developing neural networks for robots, picking up stuff in warehouses of many large companies. Now, the RFM1 base model should give warehouse robots, quote, human-like reasoning ability. The base model means that RFM1 can be trained on more data to perform more tasks. That is, if more data is collected and given to the system, the robots can work in more than just warehouses. One of RFM1's key capabilities is its ability to predict the subsequent actions of objects. It can model complex objects such as flexible ones and forecast accurate results. RFM1 also incorporates language data for better human interaction. Again, it sounds scary, but if that's what it takes to get me my free two-day shipping, who am I to judge? SpaceX has launched its grand starship for the third time, and you could say the mission was a success. At least things have progressed, and this time the ship has actually entered Earth's orbit. 
Also, Starship, for the first time, reached an orbital speed of over 16,500 miles, or 26,500 kilometers per hour, and climbed at an altitude of over 120 miles, or 200 kilometers, and experienced in-flight opening and closing of the cargo bay doors, as well as demonstration of pumping fuel from the small tank to the main tank. Who knew it had so many tanks? How did the launch go? Well, during the launch, all 33 Raptor engines engaged, stage separation went as planned after 2 minutes and 45 seconds, and then the spacecraft continued to climb into orbit using its engines, while the super heavy first stage began preparing for the boost back burn maneuver to change trajectory and return closer to the launch site. The controlled descent proceeded to an altitude of about 2 miles or 3 kilometers, but a malfunction occurred where the three landing engines were activated to dampen speed, which triggered the booster to self-destruct. The craft, on the other hand, was in flight for 48 minutes, but it was lost on re-entry in the atmosphere. In the end, about half of the test objectives were accomplished. Among the unrealized objectives were restarting the Raptor's engines in space and a controlled landing. As for the ship, it apparently burned up in the upper atmosphere because it lost some of its fireproof shielding. So, we wait for the fourth launch. Judging by the company's rapid progress, it has good chance of being a complete success. What do you guys think? We recently featured a video of the impressive climbing abilities of a tall crate robot from Unitree Robotics, and now the engineers at ETH Zurich have shown that their robot Animal can do the same. Animal is a unique robot in terms of the number of setups and skills. In a slightly different variation though, nevertheless, Animal recently demonstrated the wonders of balancing on wheels, as well as the ability to use its front legs as hands to interact with objects. Now the creators have customized the robot's AI system so that it can handle almost any obstacle in its path. By trial and error, Animal has learned to evaluate obstacles and choose an approach, whether it's climbing over an obstacle, crawling under them, or any combination of movements that have actually worked in the past. The results are impressive. In general, one gets the feeling that this robot has far fewer limitation than it seemed at first glance when the robot dog was first introduced. Let's try a little trivia. What's the best application for this machine that you can come up with? Let us know in the comments below. Britain's 127 million Dragonfire laser weapon has now passed all tests. Yay! Dragonfire is a 50 kilowatt solid state laser consisting of beams of compound fiberglass, the output of which is converted into a single beam using a UK developed beam combining system. Mounted on a turret, it also has a secondary laser and an electro optical camera for target detection and beam correction. In tests, the system reportedly disabled a boat, blinded a drone, and even shot down a second one. In addition, the UK Ministry of Defense published an image of a mortar shell burned through by Dragonfire. Despite its success, the laser will not be used as a standard weapon in the Royal Navy and British Army. Wink wink, nudge nudge. Its function is to act as a technology presentation that accumulates data to build the next generation system. Unless they're planning to play with a very large cat, it doesn't seem they're doing it for kicks and giggles. Researchers at Carnegie Mellon University have developed a system to teleoperate humanoid robots using a real-time camera. The algorithm recognizes the operator's movements using reinforcement learning, scalable retargeting, and extensive data sets on human movements. Thanks to this, humans can remotely control robots using a regular RGB camera without additional suits or sensors or any of the like. The result is a kind of a comprehensive simulator of total body movements. In this way, the engineers propose to train and smoothly transition to the actual deployment of humanoid robots with zero training. The developers say their method is suitable for dynamic movements such as walking and for simple tasks of grasping and moving objects. This makes intuitive and dynamic interaction between humans and humanoid robots much, much easier. Moving on, the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics at the Hong Kong Institute of Science and Innovation unveiled a chatbot that will help neurosurgeons make diagnoses. The model is trained on more than a million articles and books on neurosurgery, and it has a rule to always back up recommendations with sources. This technically should protect against errors because, well, the price here is pretty high. 
Details on whether the scientists have managed to completely get rid of hallucinations of the neural network, the biggest problem of all known language models, remains to be cleared up. But it's already known that the new AI is about to take up duties in seven medical centers in Hong Kong. It's also reported that the chatbot is able to take in information in any format, be it photo, video, or audio. And in May, Morocco will host the Jitex Africa Robot Exhibition, which will bring together the brightest startups and IT leaders. The event promises to be large-scale and interesting, which means, that's right, a review is afoot. If you haven't already, check out the link from Jitex in Dubai last year, found in the description to this video. And a practical application of artificial intelligence was recently demonstrated in China. There, the AI cleaned up a railroad and it apparently started to work better than a new one. The problem was that it's very difficult to keep the infrastructure and the fleet in order given that railroad networks connect all cities in China with a population of over 500,000 people. That's close to 28,000 miles or 45,000 kilometers of track, which is longer than the equator of the entire planet. To solve the problem, not only specific AI was developed, but also a data management protocol that protects the system from hacks and leaks. Also, sensors were installed on the infrastructure on the cars and wheel sets to account for vibration, acceleration, and amplitudes, plus the usual signaling automatics. As a result, the volume of data collected for analysis reached 200 terabytes and the developed algorithm managed to cope with that well in real time. For example, AI can warn repair crews about abnormal situations within 40 minutes with an accuracy of 95%. Recommendations are usually aimed at preventing potential problems as the algorithm finds such connections and patterns in the data stream that humans simply can't catch. Modex 2024, the international manufacturing distribution and supply chain trade show was held in Atlanta, where you can see more and more robots every year. Robotic solutions for loading and unloading trucks, collaborative robots for sorting and other tasks that can work alongside humans, autonomous mobile robots, and more. This year, 33 exhibitors contain the word robot or robotics in their names. And almost all of the major material handling solution providers and system integrators were demonstrating bots regardless of their name. This clearly shows that robots are the future. The European Parliament approved a law regulating the use of artificial intelligence. According to it, real-time facial recognition in public places and other biometric identification systems are banned. Exceptions are certain situations in which law enforcement agencies may use such technologies under strict security measures. These are, for example, the targeted search for a missing person or the prevention of a terrorist attack. Also, general purpose artificial intelligence systems will have to meet certain transparency requirements. In addition, all artificial or fake images, as well as created audio or video content, in other words, deep fakes, must clearly be labeled as such. The law must now be approved by the European Council. The regulation is expected to come into force at the end of May this year. The first patient with a Neuralink chip in his brain is now playing chess just by thinking it. Nolan Arbo, 29, was paralyzed below the shoulders eight years ago after an accident. In January this year, he underwent surgery to implant a Neuralink chip. According to the first volunteer, it was simple and he was out of the hospital the next day. It then took some time to train and set up the equipment and lo and behold, we can see Nolan controlling the cursor on the laptop screen with just the power of his mind. The volunteer himself admitted that the chip changed his life, and now he has gained opportunities that he was deprived of for so long. For example, playing Civilization VI for eight hours straight. Take care of those barbarians, Nolan. There's more, but we're out of time. So this is the part where we announce the winner of our previous giveaway. As always, to participate, you had to A, subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram, and B, answer the following question. Rolls-Royce has 80% of its parts from which car manufacturer? And the answer is, car lovers know this, BMW. So if we turn to our random comment picker, we shall see that the $50 gift card goes to... 
Commanders! Congratulations, Commanders. Please check if your email address is up to date on your YouTube page so that we can send you the gift card. If for some reason that is not an option, then please contact us via the email address located in the description to redeem your gift card. Thank you so much for participating. Otherwise, join us on Telegram, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more news from the world of high tech.